Do you think Jesus ever went away on holiday? I don't mean as a kid, um, after he started preaching. No record of it in the Gospel, but then obviously they've got more important things to talk about. It, but it does mention once when he was going to go on holiday. It didn't work out. Do you remember? He'd sent the apostles off, I think for the first time, for a few weeks. No money, no backup, no extra clothes and so on. Beg your way. They had to learn to depend on God's providence and people's uh, generosity. Anyway, they came back full of it. We all talk about it, but they were obviously quite tired, they were working quite hard, so Jesus said we need a holiday. But now listen to what happened. This is, and all the Gospels, this is Mark's in chapter 6. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught, and he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. But there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going and many guessed where. And so from every town they all hurried to the place on foot and they got there before them. So as Jesus stepped ashore, he saw a large crowd and he took pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he set himself to teach them at some length. <coughs> well, what did the apostles feel then? Imagine you've planned a holiday. You're all going off. Next week we'll be on holiday. Look at it wonderful and then just before you're going that day or the day before cancelled what do you feel about that well it depends on how it happened supposing word came from the place where you're working look there's been an emergency I'm sorry you have to come into work sorry about this but it's an absolute mess, you've got to come. Or, supposing you're getting ready to go, one of the kids runs out in the road and gets hit by a car. God, you pick him up, carry him. He looks okay. Shocked, but, but well, no, we'd better get him into the hospital. We can't risk it. Then you don't think about, oh dear, no holiday. It's family. And I think that's the big difference. Did the apostles see these people coming as work or family? Clearly, Jesus saw them as family. Never mind the holiday, these people are in need. I've got to help them. Family can be hard work. It's not like an ordinary job, but distinguish between family and, and work, the job that earns your living. There's a big difference in attitude, probably, even if you really enjoy your work. You don't get weekend breaks when you're on a holiday, when you're a, about, about with a family. You don't get off the weekend from the family. That can be hard work. No, I remember one woman, uh, she was very y a young mother at the time of this Second World War. She had six tiny children. And she said the noise would drive her mad. She didn't know how she could take it. Anyway, the beginning of the war they were suddenly evacuated and the house was dead empty not a noise and she told me the thing she missed most was what she thought she hated most saturday evenings with bath water and cocoa all over the kitchen floor trying to get the kids to bed 
she thought that's what got her down when it came to it. That's what she missed her most. So do you take a holiday from the family? Yeah, if you do, sometimes you need a break. But that's not to neglect the family. More to have energy to cope with it. When I, before I came to my present parish, somebody asked me to help with a group called A Keep Notre Dame, Our Ladies Teams. They're couples, mainly with children, who meet just as couples, not with the children, once a month. And they have a sort of rule of life. They're supposed to pray each day together and read the Bible each day together and uh, various things they did or didn't. And then the sitting down time. I said, what on earth is sitting down time? Oh, when you've got the kids, sometimes we hardly have time to see each other. So once a week, for half an hour, we sit down and talk. It might be just chat and trivial, or it might be something important we need to sit, share. It's to give them energy to focus on what they're really doing. You take a holiday, from work, that's different, but from the family, it's not really a holiday, it's just to get energy. I did hear, though, about one priest in America, someone told me, who would never go on holiday. He said, oh, my parish need me, I can't go off, it's not fair. <clears throat> in the end, the bishop said, I'm going to suspend you for a month, so you can't say mass in that parish, you can't hear confession, you can't do anything. Go on holiday. I don't know if he did. Anyway, Jesus saw the people coming, and they were family, they needed him. And I'm, we don't know about the apostles, to what extent it was work, or to what extent they thought, yes, we needed. And he used the, the metaphor, as he often did, of being a shepherd with sheep. Who are your sheep? This doesn't just apply to priests and bishops and people in a pastoral role. Each of us have in our lives people we are to care for. Okay, sometimes in family, yeah? But more than that, people who are in your life. The woman who cleans up in the place where you work. In fact, you hardly see her, but occasionally. The kid is shouting his head off in the store when you're going round and mother can't cope. People in our lives, our attitude to them can be one of family and love and care or not. One man told me, you know, when he first went to London, he was waiting for the tube, the underground train, and there was a delay, an announcement we apologise for the uh, delay, but there has been an accident, someone has fallen on the line. Oh gosh, he said, I hope he's all right. And he asked, and he managed to get hold of a porter who said, well, uh, a man, uh, we don't know if it was an accident or suicide, but the man is dead. Tragic. Then he said, six months later, when I was waiting for a tube, and they made a similar announcement, I thought, Oh, heaven, look, I've got to get home. I can't be waiting here all day. You get used to things and you stop caring and you don't actually see people anymore. Or when you see it, you've got to see now, what are we looking for? Who are the, who are the people in your life? <clears throat> in the supermarket near us, there's one woman, she's got a wonderful smile. She'd be in her late 50, I think, or 60. Well, I don't wonder, it's just, I don't wonder why, she's more than smiling, always pleasant. There's another one who I think is absolutely rude. It doesn't matter how many times I say good morning or good evening or anything, totally ignored. Began to wonder if I existed or not. But who am I to judge what she's wondering about or what's up at the back? Just like once, uh, same supermarket, I was going on, there was some kid screaming his head off, totally out of control. 
Mother's well, doing nothing. Well, I've got a hearing aid, so I just took it out. That's easy enough. People have been mad. I don't know if anyone said anything to her. Later, I, when I went to, a, I had to go to the doctor about something, in the waiting room, there was a kid like that, not the same person, but crying and screaming non-stop, driving everyone mad. And mother could do nothing with it. In fact, the mother talking to her friend said, eventually I discovered she lives on the, right at the top floor of a block of flats on her own. And this kid is screaming and crying day in and day night. Uh, day out. And that's why she brought her to the doctor to see what on earth is wrong. But the one in the supermarket suffering like that, did anyone offer to help? I bet she got some black looks. Doing church as well. I wonder if anyone offered her, somebody may have said something nasty. The people who are sheep to us are anyone in our lives whom we should uh, uh, care for. And that is practically anyone in our lives. And the danger is we just don't see them. Remember the story of what they call often Dives and Lazarus, the rich man living it up and at his door there was a, a, a beggar. A sores which the dogs licked and he glad, was glad to have got something from the uh, uh, crumbs off their table, but nobody gave him anything, hopeless. Parable that Jesus told. The rich man didn't sort of walk past him. The rich man didn't see him. If you'd said to the man about that fellow at your gate, you'd say, what man? He just didn't see him. We need to see our sheep, see who they are, and also then to think, is there any element in me which ignores them, that which I don't realise? I noticed on the internet the other day that they'd had a survey of children, what they felt about parents on the phone. One kid said, I hate the phone. I wish they'd never invented it. A third of the people they asked, there were thousands of them, uh, Europe and across the Americas and so on and, and in Asia. A third, about 32%, said they really felt unwanted. I think that was the word they used. When mum or dad took the phone during a meal or even when they were watching television together or chatting or playing a game. I don't suppose the parents realised, well, quick call, I might just take it. One man said he did notice, later he wrote in, he had a kid about four or five years old, and when they were playing snakes and ladders, he said, if, if I took a phone call, she didn't want to play after that. But are there other elements? As a priest, somebody once said to me, Father, I know you're very busy, you're always in a hurry. I thought afterwards, I'm not in a hurry with everybody. Know who your sheep are, first of all. Anyone in your life that you come across and hardly perhaps know their name. And then, is there any way in which I'm treating them as work and not family? Or perhaps not even that, just ignoring them. Pray to be a good shepherd and not the alternative, as Jesus calls it, a hired hand, someone who does it because it's a job. Pray for that grace to be a good shepherd. It's a wonderful thing. And enjoy a holiday.